So how does ABS, traction control, and VSC work in modern Toyotas? In today's video, we're gonna keep things simple because they're actually a lot more complicated than we're gonna make them sound. We're gonna talk about ABS, traction control, VSC, how they work, some things you need to know about them, and everything in between right after this. So what is ABS? Let's start with the very basics. ABS stands for anti-lock brakes. As the name suggests, they it's a system that prevents the wheels from locking up or stop turning when you hit the brakes very hard. And the purpose of that is not just to make them not squeal and make that very cool sound of the wheel sliding. It's actually to maintain control. When your wheel locks up, you're only contacting the road with a small patch. And you, if you turn it, it's just going to slide. If you turn your wheel, it's just going to slide forward. So the purpose of ABS is avoid that lock of the wheel so you can maintain steering and stability and control. That is the main purpose of the anti-lock brake system. But wait, how does it work? So here's how this is going to work. Each wheel will have an individual speed sensor watching the speed of that wheel. The computer will be watching these readings of each wheel. Let's say we're driving at 50 miles an hour, you hit the brakes very hard. Well, the wheel that locks up, it, it essentially stops turning. So the computer will see that that wheel, the speed of that wheel drops from 15 to zero immediately. It's gonna know that that wheel locked up and it's gonna start acting. But how is it gonna act? The device that actually controls the ABS or kind of the main component of an ABS system, it's a component that has an electronic side and a hydraulic side because brakes are hydraulic and electronic so it would watch and activate it as needed. So it's going to have a series of valves that could let the flow of brake fluid go to each individual wheel normally like when we're driving normally and then it has an ability to hold that pressure applied, release it or increase the pressure to it. I hope that makes sense. So here's what's gonna happen when we actually have an activation event. When that one wheel locks up, the computer is gonna immediately release, because usually it's not all four wheels are gonna lock up immediately. Usually it's one that starts. The computer is gonna block the flow of brake fluid, release some of that pressure to that wheel to let it go free again because we're applying too much brake force to that one wheel. We don't want to release everything and then the car won't stop. It's going to release the pressure. When it sees that wheel starts turning, it's going to hold it. When it sees that that wheel, we need more braking, it's going to apply more pressure to it. Just kind of balance it so it's right at the edge of locking up, but it is not locking up. So we're applying maximum brake pressure to that wheel, but not allowing it to lock. You're going to see that and feel that when the car does that because you're gonna feel that buzzing vibrating in the brake pedal because it's actually doing that multiple times back and forth back and forth back, kind of balancing that wheel to keep it at maximum braking without letting it lock up that's how it's gonna do that that cycle is gonna repeat 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 for any other wheels that lock up to maintain maximum stability and control so you would not lose steering when we are braking very hard and there's a very important component in that magical device that does all this which by the way in most cases is called brake actuator it has a pump that can pressurize the fluid and have it ready on standby because when you need to increase the pressure well your your foot is already on the brake pedal so that pump will send pressurized fluids to increase the pressure when needed So traction control came about after ABS because they discovered, okay, when you brake very hard and the wheels lock up, you're going to lose steer and control. But you also have the same effect when the wheels start spinning. You're driving over ice, you're accelerating very hard, or there's water, whatever the case may be, and the wheel, one wheel loses traction and starts spinning faster than the rest, you also lose steering ability. So they wanted to stabilize the car, hence the word traction control. So here's how traction control works. The original versions of traction control actually used throttle. They would cut back the throttle and now you're not accelerating as fast. 
and the wheel is no longer spinning. Then we started with utilizing ABS to actually control the traction and now they use both. That's the beauty of it. So here's how that works. The computer is also watching the same speed sensors of the ABS. When a wheel starts spinning or losing traction, that wheel is not going to come down to zero like when it locks up. It's going to actually speed up faster than the rest of the wheels. So the computer will know, I have a wheel that is losing traction. Here's what it's going to do. It will try to cut the throttle in modern cars. It's going to cut the throttle response a little bit if it sees both driving wheels losing traction. It's going to see if that's just enough to stop it from spinning. But if it's still spinning, it's going to actually utilize the same brake actuator for the ABS. Because remember, that brake actuator has a motor and it connect, it, all, the brake, all the brake lines pass through it to go to the four wheels. It's going to send a little bit of brake pressure to that wheel to brake on that one wheel to slow it down from spinning, to stabilize it. And if the other wheel starts spinning, we're gonna send a little bit of brake to slow it down and keep it at the same pace so we don't have wheels spinning and losing traction. That's how traction control works. It's actually not a completely complicated system. It's just software, basically. We're communicating with the engine computer, telling it to cut down the throttle a little bit. We're communicating with the ABS system telling it to apply a little bit of brake to this wheel that's about to run out on us. That's all it does. It's all, so there's no, in the older days it used to have like a separate computer and everything was very complicated. But in modern cars, it's nothing but software. This is just the beauty of it. Let's talk about VSC, which is the most misunderstood system. Most folks assume VSC is the same as traction control. They are actually not. VSC stands for Vehicle Stability Control. And what this system does is it controls the entire car from veering from its intended direction. That sounds like some technical jargon. Let me translate that very simply. It keeps the car from sliding, the entire car, losing traction, not one wheel. So if you hydroplane or you oversteer or understeer, your back of the car slides out or the front slides all together and you kind of, you're about to completely turn the car and completely lose control. That's what VSC actually controls. And here's what the computer for the VSC is looking for. It uses a variety of sensors to calculate what is the intended direction of travel. It's a very complicated system in reality, software-wise. But all it does is it's watching you, watching where the car is going, and drawing a map. This is where the car should head. If we veer from that, we are sliding and we need to correct it. Let's talk about some of the sensors that actually can contribute to the VSC. The first one is wheel speed sensors, of course. The second sensor is going to be your steering angle sensor. This is a sensor that sits on the steering. It tells the computer how far you're turning the steering wheel and in which direction. That's very important that it knows so it can calculate your heading, where you're going. The second sensor is called the yaw rate sensor. This is a sensor that basically, in, in very simple terms, it's a very sophisticated and complicated sensor it can tell when the car is sliding or we are losing, like kind of having a momentum that is abnormal for the normal movement of the car or rotation, basically. The third sensor is acceleration sensor. It has multiple names in some, are some applications, but basically this sensor tells the computer which direction is the car heading and how far is it? What is the kind of the acceleration pattern? Are you accelerating hard? Are you accelerating a little bit? Are you going forward? Are you going back? That's what that sensor tells the computer. So here's what the computer is going to do. You're driving. It's going to look at, okay, we're going to, we're going this speed. We're turning this much. This is the intended path that this car should take because obviously the designers know the dimensions of the car and know how it's going to behave based on the suspension design. So they anticipate that the path this car is going to take is this one. So now they're going to start watching our acceleration sensor and our yaw rate sensor. Are we in that intended path or not? 
If we are not, that means only one thing. The car is sliding or it's, it's veering from its intended path, meaning the rear wheels all of a sudden lost traction and the whole car is about to turn, or the front wheels lost traction is about to turn this way, or we're hi or about to hydroplane, all four wheels just lost traction is about to turn. Here's what it's gonna do, and it's such a rapid system. If you've ever had VSC actually activate, they usually beep and they're very aggressive because they have to act within a moment. It only takes half a second for this car to completely lose traction and it's over at some point. It cannot correct it. What it's gonna do is, it's gonna counter. If the car is sliding this way, it's gonna actually hit certain wheel brakes to correct it and bring it back to that intended path. It's not gonna do magic. If you are intentionally or you're driving very recklessly, it may not be able to recover it. But if you're driving normally, that you're driving over snow, over ice, over water, and you're going at a higher speed, and it is, the car decided to want to hydroplane, it will actually be able to recover it because it's rapid and it's very aggressive. Very different than ABS. ABS is not aggressive, it does make the buzzing and whatnot, but it's not aggressive. Traction control, not really aggressive. VSC, very aggressive and very rapid for obvious reasons because it takes half a second for it to react, otherwise it's too late. And the other thing that the VSC does because of modern computers and how they communicate, it'll actually be able to cut the throttle and sometimes change the shifting of the transmission. Things have gotten very advanced with VSC with all the safety systems in the car. But VSC is a very important one. That's the one that actually saves the most lives in a car's safety systems. Let's talk about some common problems with ABS traction control and VSC. So they're kind of a staggered system. ABS can operate ind independently from the other two, but if the other, but the ABS goes down, they all go down. That's how this works. You can have a problem with VSC, you can have a problem with traction control, and the ABS will still work. So that, that's important that you know that. Starting, the first problem that affects all three immediately, and is a very common one, speed sensor failure. So the speed sensor is a small sensor with a wire. Sometimes it's part of it, sometimes it's separate, but that wire passes through the suspension and articulates with it. That's a common failure point. Usually it's the wire, not the sensor itself, because that's a part that moves all the time and it's exposed to elements and rocks and debris from the street. So that's the number one failure with ABS systems. The other sensors, the steering angle sensor can be the second, but it's a far second, not it's the second most common, it's not. Because the steering angle sensor always moves as well, it has a lot of movement, it's been right behind the steering wheel. It is not as common, but possible to fail as well. But the R8 sensor, their failure rates are very low. Usually they fail from severe accidents, fail from things spilling on them because they're usually inside the car, more than they make, like the part itself fails from age. And same thing can be said about the acceleration sensor. They're really rarely to go out on Toyotas, except accidents, spills, or rare cases. Now the brake actuator that controls, basically does all the magic for the ABS, it can fail in one of two ways. Either you have contamination that these solenoid valves stop functioning as they should, or the motor goes out. The motor is just uh, motor brushes and everything wear and tear will wear it out excessive heat will wear it out quicker but these are the two ways and usually the brake actuator in most cases it's a unit you can't replace parts inside of it very rarely you could successfully rebuild it so some cases the motor will be separate than the than the block it's not a very common thing in the newer cars usually they're one unit if, if one of one of the two sides fail you have to replace the whole thing that is how this works Folks, let's talk about some things you should know about these systems. We're starting with the number one asked question. Why does a VSC and traction control light, VSC off and traction control light, warning lights, come on when the check engine light is on? This is the number one asked question. And folks usually will see the check engine light, not be worried about it. They'll worry about the VSC and traction control light. Do you remember that we said that the both these systems could utilize the throttle, to cut down the throttle when they activate? Well, the computer is not a diagnostician. It doesn't know what's going on with the check engine light. 
it just sees a tr an error is reported. But and because it relies on the engine computer to limit the throttle, it's actually going to get disabled by default until the error code is cleared. There's nothing wrong with the VSC. There's nothing wrong with the traction control. It's just the engine computer has a code. It could be as simple as you left your gas cap loose. They will be disabled because the computer doesn't know what's wrong with it. It just knows there is a trouble code. Disable these two. But you notice the ABS does not get disabled when that happens because the ABS operates completely independent. It has nothing to do, it does have some stuff crossed over with the engine computer, but it doesn't rely on it for its operation. So that is separate. You see an ABS light on, you will see VSC and track as well. But when you see an ABS light, you have a problem with the ABS light. You see a check engine light, in addition to traction control VSC, you, have a, you look at the check engine light codes first. There is no codes in VSC. That's a very important thing to know. The second thing is, how do you prevent failures in these systems? I see a lot of failures from normal wear and tear on the sensors, but also from bad service. When you go route a sensor, you need to route it exactly how it was designed, because if you leave it loose, it's just gonna get caught by the suspension and ripped, and you're gonna have premature failure on that wire. The second thing is, brake fluid replacement, timely brake fluid replacement is important. But what is timely, what is that interval? Nobody can tell you accurately. You need to test the fluid. As I said, there's a very simple test that you could do, a little strip you test it or electronic to determine if that fluid needs to be replaced. And when it does, so replace it. Simple as that. And then when we come to ABS bleeding, if you're just replacing a caliper on your car, except hybrids, hybrids are a little bit different. But if you're just replacing a caliper on your car, you don't need to bleed the ABS because the ABS is just open letting fluid through. We didn't, but if you replace the actuator itself, you do need to bleed it. That is the one important detail I wanted to give you. Folks, ABS traction control VSC and Toyotas, for the most part, they are very reliable. Certain models will have certain issues that are common, but for the most part, they are very reliable. They work very well. They really actually have gotten pretty basic because cars have advanced so much. But I hope this video has helped you now understand these three, three friends because we actually have them in most of our cars and we don't even think about them. And they're there to help us possibly get out of the very dangerous situation. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you're doing something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. Until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you and you have yourself a wonderful day.